I'm about as real as they come. All my beats tailored by Joe. Maserati Rick in Detroit Convertible bird in Miami Graduated summa cum laude Strip club made a tsunami Carlton Hines with the ball game Rayful Edmonds with the snowflakes Craig Pettis in the M-Town Sal Magluta with the boat game Falcone with the cocaine Like Freeway Ricky with the plug game Like Monster Cody in South Central Larry Davis from Close Range And I got my man Steady B right here from the old school From the Hilltop Yo, Steady, y'all got a new single out. See, you know, CB get the point. You know what I'm saying? It's kicking live, man. You know, tell me a little bit how you got together with those brothers to do that single. Well, you know, CB, that's Cool C, DJ E's, and myself, Steady B. As you all know, you know, me and Cool been down for a while. I produced two albums that he had on Atlantic. I had five albums out on Job. So, you know, we took a break from that shit. So we came together, you know, and, you know, we just came together just to give a public a new look. We decided to just make a group, you know what I mean, CEB. That was our names, and we came out, we get the point. That's on Rough House Columbia, so if you ain't already got it, go get it, you know what I'm saying? So that's the story on that thing right there. Yeah, that's a real hype single, man. Y'all coming out with an album this summer sometime? Yeah, yeah the album we dropped in May 2nd. It's called Counting Endless Bank. Counting Endless Bank. So you go get get the point, you go get Count Endless Bank, and a new single will drop it at the same time of the album. It's called Goes Like This. We are, we are yeah, steady. Seems like can't get anybody. Come on, stage. The house isn't packed at all, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know where everybody is at. Might be at the clubs or whatever. But study be what's going on right now here? Just what you said, homie, you know what I mean? The house ain't packed, you know what I'm saying? We got a little bit of people out there. Promoter can't pay the group, so I don't know what's going to happen. I know CEB ain't going on, you know what I'm saying? We ain't getting no cash. Lords on the underground, I don't think they going on. Ain't nobody come. I guess they didn't want to see us. Yo, yo, we back. It's your boy Papa Lot, Mob, Taz. We headed back to Philly. When my niggas from Philly, y'all niggas get in the comment box, let it be known. Now... We about to talk about what only th only thing I can call it is a hip hop tragedy. We about to cover two dudes that are legends in the Philadelphia hip hop scene. Um, one by the name of Steady B, another by the name of Cool C. Anybody from Philly is probably definitely familiar with them. They are hip-hop MCs who, along with Schooly D, Fresh Prince, Three Times Dope, they were one of the first wave of Philadelphia area MCs to gain notoriety back in the mid-80s. Um, they was they were something like a big deal in the city. In 91, Steady B and Cool C, they formed a group called CEB, which stood for Count Endless Bank. And they released the album on Rough House Records back in 1992, which had a single on it by the name of Get to the Point, which reached number five on the Billboard's Hot Rap Singles charts. But the, the streets ain't take to the album too well. So that ultimately led to them being involved in a bank robbery where the first policewoman in Philly lost her life in a long time a long long time it was a real real big deal so much of a big deal that it got steady b life it got cool c the death penalty he just got a, a stay of his execution i want to say back in 2015 but he's currently on death row in philly um yeah so shit's just overall a sad story i ain't gonna get into it anymore um, but I do want to say salute to everybody that's in the comment boxes, letting it be known about gangsters in a city, people that they want to see me cover. I salute y'all, salute to everybody that was following this mob tie shit from day one. Um, shit is building and it wouldn't be without y'all. So salute to all of y'all. Anybody that's hearing these words right now, salute to you. Um, if y'all got anybody that y'all want to get covered, y'all niggas get in the comment box. Y'all get at me on Twitter, Instagram, um, at Popalot, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. Y'all like and subscribe. This is Mob Ties. Philadelphia banks are not hit by takeover teams very often, and with good reason. There are a few ways out. Dwayne Swierczynski, the Wheelman. 
It was nearly opening time at a PNC bank on Rising Sun Avenue in the Albany section of North Philadelphia, as early pedestrians ambled past on the cold, foggy morning of Tuesday, January 2nd, 1996. The bank manager entered the low-rise building alone. At the set bus stop a few feet away, a pair of construction workers casually looked on, wearing white hard hats. The two young men appeared to be simply sipping hot coffee, puffing on Newports and talking about the forthcoming blizzard, except they weren't. Instead those two men, later identified as Christopher Roney, 26, and Mark Canty, 22, were watching every move, waiting for the opportunity to bum rush the manager and rob the bank. On the streets of Philly, Roney was more popularly known by his professional hip-hop handle, Cool C A hit song called Glamorous Life had made him a local celebrity back in 1989, but a lot had changed since then. Canty was not famous, having been recently fired from a lunchroom gig at Albert Einstein Medical Center, but rounding out the motley trio was another familiar face, Warren McGlone, 26, who acted as the heist's wheelman. McGlone was well known as a key figure in the Philly hip-hop scene, a chubby microphone sensation who called himself Steady B DJ E's, Cool C and Steady B as the short-lived CEB, Count an Endless Bank. One year before the attempted bank robbery Canty carried a 9mm and Roney a 380 caliber semi-automatic, both knew this branch had no security guard. When PNC's first employee arrived, they pushed their way through the building's doorway. The manager was forced to the floor while Ganty took an employee to the back to access the vault. Having pulled off successful heists previously with the rappers, Candy surely anticipated a major payday. So what if it was supposed to snow? Later that day, it'd be raining green. However, within moments of entering the PNC bank, the silent alarm was stripped. The bear's clumsily thought-out plan began to go haywire. Riding solo in patrol car number 2516, female Philadelphia police officer Laura Favette, a former ditches aide who had joined the force nearly nine years prior, responded to the call. As Vette stepped towards the bank door with her gun drawn, Canty reportedly screamed to Roni, here comes the heat, the sound of Philadelphia. Back in the late 1980s, when hip-hop was still maturing into a commercial art form, Cool C and Steady B were ghetto superstars. They performed shows at Fairmount Park's Fable Plateau in West Philadelphia and had their 12 inches and albums stuffed into metal racks at Funko Mart on Market Street. Having met when they were students at Overbrook High School, which Will Smith also attended, both were signed to local label Pop Art Records who, in turn, got them distribution and marketing deals with larger labels. Although Steady B and Cool C were young boys, still teens when they signed on the dotted line, they were ripping the region well, working as hard as their elders Lady B, Schooly D and MC Breeze. Those guys were the quintessential Philly rappers. MK Asant, author of the Philly Coming of Age memoir Buck, says, they had that Philly aggression and cockiness that just made them completely ours. Steady B came out with a song to sing LL Cool J, I'll Take Your Radio, and Cool C made a track talking about the Juice Crew. Juice Crew Dis. Pop Art was owned by Lawrence Goodman and overseen by his brother, Dana. The label had previously released techno-funk singles by Galaxy, Disco Soul from Major Harris and early singles by Juice Crew comrades Roxanne Shanta and Bismarcky. In the 1970s, years before fictional gangster rapper turned music mogul Lucius Lyon made Philadelphia rap fodder for culture vultures on Empire, Goodman had conceived the label with Ron Akins while they served time at Greta Ford Prison. Located in West Philly on City Line Avenue, the small label soon became a hip-hop beacon in the brotherly love metropolis. Pop Art's first forays into rap were Eddie D's Cold Cash Money and Roxanne Shanday's Roxanne Revenge in 1984. These led to a run of impactful releases from the label, which played an important role in the emerging rap marketplace. What Philadelphia International meant to soul in the 70s, Pop Art was to rap in the 80s. Hip-hop was still very much a singles medium back then, and Pop Art Records was more influential than they are given credit for. Rolling Stone writer and pop music historian Jesse Sower explains, in 2008, he wrote about the rise and fall of the pioneering label in the Philly issue of Wax Poetics. 
When Marley Marl and those guys couldn't get deals in New York City, they came to Philadelphia and signed with Pop Art. The Goodmans were street dudes, but they knew hip hop. Steady B promotional photo in 1986. After producer Marley Marl jumped ship and started cold chilling with his manager Tyrone Fly Ty Williams, Pop Art released a few hoagie sized disc bombs aimed at those bums in Queens. This was back in the 80s, as Sand laughs. When Philly was the wild, wild west, and those guys were coming at Marley Marl, Craig G, coming at everybody. That's the thing we Philly cats got, and I think people appreciated it about them. We had these guys representing where we was from, and that was special too. Steady B and Cool C both represented that Philly hustle mentality. Steady B, who was Goodman's nephew, was the first to sign to the label, releasing the street hard and scratch heavy Just Call Us Death in 1985. The self-proclaimed b-boy genius, along with his homie Grand Dragon KD were ready to explode. Like a nuclear attack on the hip-hop crowd, the B-side of the 12-inch single was the equally hard fly shant, a duet with Roxanne, that same year, souped up off the fumes of teenage fame and professional disdain for other rappers, he dropped the LL Cool J disc Take Your Radio, while Steady was a fan of the Kangle wearing rapper, Pop Art encouraged this records, knowing it would inspire fans to pay attention. Dropping his album Bring the Beat back a year later through Jive Records, Steady B was seen as a contender. Pop Art and Steady B were on a mission to expose the flyness of their hood, along with DJ Tap Money and Three Times Dope. An artist label collective came together called the Hilltop Hustlers, an homage to a former West Philly street gang from the 70s. Two years later, Steady teamed up with his Jive label mate, hip hop icon KRS One, who added his Bronx Boogie to a remix of Steady's single Serious, a super catchy track from his third album Let the Hustlers Play. Philly rap superstars Jazzy Jeff and Fresh Prince in 1986 photo by David Carrier during the same time period. Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince and Saul Penn Peeper were also signed to Pop Art. Legendary Philly rapper Cooley D says, In the beginning of Philly rap, it was just me and MC Breeze putting out records, but what the Goodmans were doing was completely different. Pop Art wasn't soft, but they had a way of taking the hardcore and making it radio friendly. I'd known Steady B first, back when he was MC Boop. Later, we performed a few times in the Midwest together, Chicago, Detroit, Ohio, Glamorous Life. After appearing on several three times dub records, Cool C's first official release was the 1988 single C's Cool, produced by Steady B and Goodman. The already veteran rapper Steady wasn't shy about sharing his expertise behind the mic as he guided Cool C through the studio process. Already close friends, Steady B and Cool C grew tighter in the lab as they worked towards the goal of being the hottest team in hip hop. With their eyes on the prize, the following year Cool C's infectious single Glamorous Life was christened the soundtrack for the city. As the first single released from his debut album I Got To Have It, the fun and funky track soon became a bonafide anthem. Corner Boys, B-Girls, Break Dancers and Party People listening to Laddie B's Street Beat Show on Power 99 all embraced his hedonistic braggadocio over a Bobby Bird sample. That song was so awesome. Remembers the trailblazing rapper and popular radio personality Lady B back then. Cool C was just a fun loving kid who loved hip hop. Back then, everyone in Philly was into representing their neighborhood. With me coming from West Philly, I'm an original Hiltoper. I thought the whole crew was very creative. But, when the Goodman brothers got Cool C signed to Omega, Atlantic Records, that was big. Hiring Lionel Martin, perhaps the most popular urban music video director during that era. Guaranteed the song would be heard outside of the MC's hometown. Although Cool C was on Atlantic, it was Lawrence Goodman who hired me to shoot the video and paid me. Martin says from his home in California, he and his business partner Ralph McDaniels operated the pioneering urban video production company Classic Concepts. Martin adds, Cool C was a very nice, polite young man. Later, Martin also crafted clips for Philly acts boys I I Men, Die Youngsters and Jill Scott. People always ask if the young girl in the video is Jill Scott, but I'm 99% sure that it isn't. She never mentioned when we worked together. Still, the best kept secret about the glamorous life was that it wasn't even shot in Philly, but in the pre-gentrification era meatpacking district in New York City. We put up these fake Street 60th and Lansdowne signs, but we were really on the docks in Manhattan. 
Protruding Puffy's well-dressed play your aesthetic by a few years, Cool C's fashionable swag stood out on stage, in press photos and videos, clad in fresh-pressed Adidas track suits, try jewelry and the coolest, cleanest kicks. C was always sharp, perpetually on point. When it came to fashion, he was slick, Schooly D recalls, seven years older than Cool C. School is seminal 1985 single PSK What Does It Mean originated gangster rap as a genre. I was closer to Cool C, because I used to see him in some of those after hours spots. You know, those open at 3 in the morning kind of places. We all had tailors back then who made us suits, and Cool C was into the flashy fashions. But when the 90s came, all of it changed. Things certainly had changed for the former pop art golden boy, whose 1990 follow-up album Life in the Ghetto scored less than impressive sales, leading to him being dropped from Atlantic. In 1993, along with Steady B's buddy DJ Ultimate Ease, the trio formed a crew called CEB and released their only album Count in Endless Bank on Rough House Records. The group's first single, Get the Point, portrayed them as gangster boogie boys maxing at the barbershop and getting locked down. Cool C's new shaved head and prison fatigues look was in keeping with the hard times grimy image of Wu-Tang, Onyx and Gangstar. But for many, the new Steez just didn't look right, it felt forced. The record sold less than 15,000 copies. Ironically, considering their future forays, Get The Point sampled the Honeycones 1971 Smash Ones hats, which opens with a singer wailing, Help, I've been robbed, stick up, highway robbery, dog day afternoon that January morning at PNC Bank, without pausing to think about past glories or future hustles, Roni's concern instantly became all about trying to escape the approaching police officer. Crouched behind the door, he saw her blue uniform coming closer, looking at the sturdy, round-faced woman. He didn't see a hard-working mother with two adoring sons, Stephen and Michael, then 11 and 17, who took care of her aging parents, loved jazz and cooking. All he saw was an obstacle, a bitch in his way. Don't worry, I'll take care of her, he yelled back, firing from his .380 caliber semi-automatic. In that moment, time froze. The single bullet exploded into Ved's chest, piercing her liver and heart. Her blood spilled, and she fell to floor. After exchanging gunfire with another officer, Roni frantically escaped with McGlone in a green van. Two guns were left at the scene, so was Candy. The entire incident was captured by surveillance cameras. Officer Laura Favette is the first policewoman killed in the city of Philadelphia. Officer Ved, who worked out of the 25th precinct, was taken to St. Christopher's Hospital for Children, where she was pronounced dead at 9.56 a.m. Ved was the first female cop killed in the line of duty in Philadelphia, in another bank across town. Her parents heard of their daughter's death from a television set, with angry police vowing swift vengeance. The rappers went on the lam, like desperate characters from the pages of a David Gordis pulp novel. McGlone and Roney raced down narrow alleyways, crept along darkened streets, dodged in the shadows of row houses that, like the two of them, had seen better days. They nervously waited, pondering what should be their next move. Three days later, both men were in police custody. McGlone confessed, dropping dime on both his partners in crime. Although Roney turned himself in, he professed to be innocent, and his lawyer A. Charles Piruto Jr. refused to allow him to be questioned. Roney's mother later claimed that he'd been home, eating breakfast with her when the crimes occurred. Canty was arrested two weeks later in Maryland. When the anticipated winter storm hit that first month of 96, Philadelphia was blanketed with whiteness. Office of Ed's funeral was held on January 11th, after being delayed twice due to the wicked weather. Hundreds of politicians, police officers and citizens packed into Mount Airy Church of God in Christ on Ogons Avenue to say goodbye and to support the Ved family. Dressed in full uniform, Ved lay in rest with gloves as white as the powdery snow stuck to the church's stained glass windows. All these years later, Philly folks still question what brought Cool C and Steady B to the point of armed robbery. Were they in debt to drug dealers? Were they stealing funds to advance their recording career? Were they simply desperate to maintain their big willy images? While it may feel difficult to get a regular 9 to 5 after tasting hip hop fame, many old school rappers have done it. Cool C and Steady B made a different choice. Philly-based alternative rap rockers G-Love and Special Source included a dedication to the fallen officer on their third album, 
1997's Yarrits That Easy, titled Slipped Away, The Ballad of Laura Thavid, Common Rye wrote that song differently than anything before or since, Garrett Dutton, the group's Jib Love, says 18 years later, told from the perspective of one of Ed's children, the track is a haunting retelling, with G Love mournfully singing in its final verse, the gangsters killed our mother dead all is lost from our family they tried to save our mom in vain she drowns in blood, and she was not saved, Garrett Dutton PKA G Love from the band G Love and special source photo by Mark Maines having grown up in Philly, Dutton was a young hip hop fan in the 1980s listening to Lady B spin Steady B and Gul C records on the radio, I researched the whole story, read all the articles I could and then just tried to figure it out, he maintains, I feel we told the story that needed to be told, here were these two famous MCs who'd been a part of my life, and I was like, what happened to those guys that they went from being stars to robbing banks meanwhile, this policewoman drops off her kids at school, goes to work and never comes back home, it was tragic. Philadelphia transplant Boo Rosario's mother was a PPD officer at the time, despite his own occasional walks on the wild side, it hit me from both sides, because the lady cop they shot was a friend of my mother, that was her buddy buddy, he says, when it started to become known who was behind the bank robbery and cop killing, it was crazy, everybody thought they were getting it as rappers, because we thought everybody who was signed got money, but apparently not. It was a facade. In the 1980s, when Gul C and Steady B were coming of age on those mean streets, West Philadelphia was transforming from the gang era into the crack era. Back in the day, in the 60s and 70s, there was the Moon Gang and others who called themselves protecting their neighborhoods, Gene Harris, a local contractor, explained. But as they got older, a lot of the old gang members became drug addicts. First it was heroin, and then later it was crack. There were a lot of small shops in the area like barber shops, beauty salons and grocery stores, but, by the mid-80s, as crack and guns became more widespread, a lot of the businesses were chased away. In the middle of the chaos was Overbrook High, the state big school, built in 1934, has alumni that includes basketball icon Wilt Chamberlain and members of the soulful Dilphonics. Lifelong Philly resident Courtney Carter attended classes there with Steady B and Gul C, and knew them both well. I'd known Steady B since we were in middle school, but me and Gul C became friends in ninth grade when he was a starter on the varsity basketball team. He was so nice on the court, off the court, both Steady B and Gul C, as well as their schoolmate Fresh Prince, performed the Miss Overbrook pageant and other local venues in West Philly. DJ Cash Money in 1988 photo by David Carrier of Philadelphia Turntable Master DJ Cash Money, winner of the New Music Seminar DJ Battle in 1987, is widely credited with pioneering the art of spinning. Whenever the early days of rap is discussed, Philly is often written out. Cash Money says, it usually goes from New York to Los Angeles to Atlanta. I'm like, really? Atlanta wasn't even making any doggone rap back then. Still dwelling in the city, Cash remembers those long gone nights when he shared the bill with the Hilltop Hustlers crew, performing on stage at the Wind Ballroom, the Spectrum or at Lady B's classic after midnight jams. In Philly, there might have been only five of us making noise outside of the city, and Steady B and Gul C were two of them. Those guys were pillars. Phil Mayer, animator and former Source magazine cartoonist Tram Daly grew up hanging at the same spots. Gul was a mild-mannered dude. He says, if something jumped off, he would jump in, but he wasn't one to start any mess. Steady was always more grimy, always talking shit and causing beef. You just knew that one day it would get him in trouble. A serious aftermath. For nearly two decades, Christopher Gulsey has lived on death row at State Correctional Institution Green, a sprawling maximum security prison over 300 miles west of Philadelphia. Roney was sentenced to death for killing Officer of Ed during that fateful botched bank job. McGlone and County were convicted of second degree murder and received life sentences. In prison, Cool C, left, is now a devout Muslim. DJ Tat Money visits Steady B, right, in the years since Cool C's 1996 conviction and incarceration, he has become one of the artists who have fallen into the margins of hip hop history, practically forgotten. That is, for everyone outside the Delaware Valley, the picturesque riverside stretch fusing Philly with parts of Jersey through points south to Maryland. Writer Sandra Sims, 
raised 45 minutes outside of Philly in Wilmington, Delaware, recognized Gulsey's name when, in January 2006, the state of Pennsylvania dispensed a brief press release across its wire service announcing Roney's pending March 9th execution date. Sims remember the rapper's golden years of fame and, like any good journalist, wanted to know more. I was shocked that they were in such desperation that they needed to go rob a bank, but I also felt very sad about Officer of Ed. Sim says, Cool C meant a lot of things to a lot of people, but he's still a real person to me. But within weeks of Sim seeing the press release, Cool C received a stay from Pennsylvania Judge Gary Glazer. Sims wrote Roney a letter, asking a series of questions for a proposed article to be published on allhiphop.com. Although Cool C responded, answering Sims' queries, the website also received a warning via CS and desist to not run the interview. Sandra Sims with Beanie Sigil of State Property eight years after the initial correspondence, the former rapper was again scheduled to be executed, this time on January 6th of this year. But on December 5th, 2014 Roney received his second stay, this time from Judge El Felipe Restrepo. Sims, who currently does music publicity for Philly-based artists, says, reading the letter that Cool C wrote me, I could tell that he had grown up, had matured, at this point, Cool C has been on death row for almost 20 years, and he is still fighting to live, he is an hour devout Muslim and seems to be on a spiritual path, on February 13, 2015, two months after Cool C received his second stay, first term Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolfe announced a moratorium on the state's death penalty, this moratorium is in no way an expression of sympathy for the guilty on death row, all of whom have been convicted of committing heinous crimes, Wolf said in a statement. In addition to Gul C, there were 187 other inmates on death row at the time of the announcement. There are obviously mixed feelings on the issue of Gul C's potential fate, with some people arguing that his death won't bring Office of Ed back while others have no remorse about a convicted cop killer paying the piper. If they was short of money, they could have flipped some work. HBO television writer and former Philly resident Carlito Rodriguez shrugs, but instead they did some extreme shit and then bust their guns. In Philadelphia, things like that might be shocking, but it's not surprising. Philadelphia is a tough town. Even the white boys know how to box. At the time that Steady B and Cool C were arrested, their label head Goodman told reporters, I was totally outdone when I heard it. We couldn't believe it. They've never been in trouble, to my knowledge. During the trial, it was revealed that other banks and businesses had been robbed by the trio, who, according to Tess Timoney, weren't opposed to pistol whipping folks just for kicks. Although I can't prove it, I swear those were the same guys who robbed a holiday in where I used to work. Philadelphia comedian Danny Ozark says, Dude jumped over the front desk and was waving a gun in my face. They took $1,500 in once and left. But when I saw that gun on television, I knew it had been them. Tat Money, Cool C, Steady B and other teenage hilltop hustlers although some rap fans have always embraced the gangster visions of their favorite MCs, beyond the big talk and thug life lyricism. No one ever expects the voice blaring through the radio to actually be robbing banks and blasting police officers, while the records made by Cool C and Steady B still serve as the theme music to vibrant yesteryear memories. Their cultural legacy is now soiled by the senselessness of the events that changed many lives one faithful winter morning. And for what? The glamorous life? Getting it to Tway sure as hell wasn't the Philly hustle in action. Not the real one, anyway. And if there's one thing Philly's always been, it's real. I never knew those guys to be gangsters, Lady B admits, taking a break from her afternoon show on Old School 100.3, knowing their upbringing, that wasn't the cloth they were cut from, they let that materialistic side of hip-hop get the best of them, they just didn't wake up that morning intending to kill a cop, 